Good evening, good evening, my beautiful butterflies and fly guys. Listen, I know you're ready to get into tonight's discussion. So without pause, let's get to it. So this week, I want to discuss this new phenomenon that I now see happening in fashion. And that is relegated solely to men. Yes, that's right. There's a trend, and, and I won't call it new, because it seems to appear every now and then, but nevertheless, this time, it seems to be returning a lot sooner than ever before. What is that trend? Well, I'm going to share this tonight, this trend, and our topic of discussion on tonight, which is, what are black men telling us when they dress like this? All right, so listen, Go ahead and tell Lottie Dottie and everybody that He Spoke Fashion is live. Are you ready, A.B.? All right. Let's get it. Hit it. Yeah, in the building. Right again, thank you for joining us. And listen, I'm glad that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to have this conversation. I know many of you have, of course, heard of all of the fallout from this year's Oscars. And unfortunately, the incident during the Oscars overshadowed all the great things that were happening. One of those in particular was the normal focus on what was worn on the red carpet. Those of us who love fashion look forward to seeing who is wearing what and how they are wearing it. Nevertheless, there was some great fashion worn at this year's Oscars and there was some not so great fashion also being worn. That my friends takes me to our discussion for tonight. What are black men telling us when they dress like this? So first of all, let me start by giving this disclaimer. I am not talking about black men who are part of the LGBTQ community, but those who up until now have not said that they were part of that community. Now that this is out of the way, let's get to the center of our discussion tonight. That is none other than Blade himself, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about you, but Wesley Snipes is one of my favorite action heroes. And listen, I really enjoyed him in the last Coming to America movie, as many of you did as well. However, while watching the red carpet interviews at the Oscars, I came across uh, this clip and it left me stunned. So I'm gonna share this clip with you. I want you to watch this and we'll be right back, right after this. See you soon. Very slim right no, now. What's going great. on? What do you want? Hey, man. You know, Vegan or something? To, trying to handle it, trying to keep it together, you know? You stole it's Billy's look because he wanted some shorts. You look, like, like, a man whole thing you look like a man who's doing a stripper movie with Kevin Hart called Chocolate Chips. <laughs> you heard about that? We heard about it. We uh, can't get enough uh, of it. Me that's been greenlit. I play a one-leg stripper. <laughs> yes. One or two? Oh, one What's stripper. your name? What is your stripper name? Please tell us. Oh, I'm man, Mr. Chocolate or something like that. <laughs> a stretch. <laughs> Wait, is, is this really happening? Uh, I think, yeah, we already did it. Yeah, the movie's done already. I think. I think. So we already shot Who's it. Who's got better moves from, from the waist down? You or Kevin? Oh, the one leg stripper, of course. You got to show us oh, one. You got to show us one move. Is this Can your you show answer us to Magic Mike? <laughs> that's right. Kind of close. Kind of old, though. I heard chocolate chips. I thought it was California Highway Patrol motorcycle like chips back oh, in no, the day. It was the chocolate chip. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a drama, I assume. Definitely a drama. 
definitely. And it may be a tragedy. It depends on the father. You know, I, I can't wait. Wesley, best dress yes, tonight. Yes, enjoy tonight. You look very slim. You look. All right, all right. Now, listen, all jokes aside, I know he said a chocolate chip, but Wesley looked like a raisin in the sun. Now, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Listen, all jokes aside, I really didn't like the question concerning uh, Wesley's weight that the uh, interviewer asked. And that seemed uh, to be the focus for many the night of the Oscars and even across social media uh, as well. But, but for me, this discussion is not about his size or about what he uh weight he's lost or anything of that nature but it is about what in the world is he wearing i mean really guys this outfit is over the top and we need to get to the bottom of it wesley come on what are you really trying to tell us by dressing like this now now i will admit that just a few years ago there were many that were in an uproar over the push to have black men dressed like this in the movies. If you recall, there were stars uh, that were always being questioned because they simply chose to accept roles in which they would have to dress like this. And there were actors uh, just like this one, Brandon T. Jackson in Big Mama 3. And you remember, he had to dress up as Martin Lawrence's character's uh, daughter, uh, there was Chris Tucker. Remember Chris Tucker in one of my favorite movies, uh, Fifth Element, The Fifth Element. He played Ruby Road. Uh, and then, come on, one of my one all-time favorites was Eddie Murphy as Rasputia in Norbert. Now, we all remember this particular character as well. And that's Jamie Foxx as Wanda on Living Color. And then... M many of you may not be as familiar with uh, this guy here, Kenan Thompson, as uh, Virginia Hastings on Saturday Night Live. But even one of the greats, I would call him none other than Kevin Hart on Saturday Night Live also wore dress. And then we can't forget last but not least, none other than Martin Lawrence, who also and Big Mama. But then there was a funny movie that was out some time ago. The movie was called White Chicks. And you wouldn't guess that it was Sean and Marlon Wayans as Brittany and Tiffany Wilson in that movie. But, but little to not be outdone, there was also Tracy Morgan, who was my Angelo in Saturday Night Live. No, Jeff, for real. Does, doesn't he look like somebody's mother? That's your uh, great uh, mom. <laughs> I'm telling you. But again, wearing a dress. And then, of course, one of the all-time favorites, Tyler Perry as Medea. And he received a lot of backlash uh, when he put on uh, that dress and that wig as Medea. But then lastly... There was Ving Rhames as Holiday Hart in that movie, Holiday Hart, which was a very good movie. You know what? I didn't even see Ving Rhames. I saw Holiday Hart in that movie. But last but not least, not to be undone by any of those, there was, there was Mr. Snipes himself in Tu Wong Fu. Now, there were quite a few men dressed up as women uh, in that movie. So, so now I, I can understand the reasoning for this because you did get a paycheck out of it. But I just don't understand uh, it. And there were others that publicly called this out as the feminization of the black male. There was Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle was one who called this out. And Dave Chappelle, uh, if you could put that post there and bring it in so I can uh, read it here, it says, comedian David Chappelle pushed the topic of feminization of the black male to the forefront of black Hollywood's consciousness 
when he sat down with TV talk show host Oprah Winfrey in 2010. Remember, Ch Chappelle had just returned from his Africa trip after his $50, 50 million dollar abandonment of his namesake sketch comedy show. The trip and the walkout were signs on the public that he was unraveling, and for this, many, many, this reason, many wrote his claims off. But recently, people are taking note of his revelation. This is what he said. I am a conspiracy theorist to a degree. I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress and lipstick at some point in their career, I'd be connecting that. Like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? Okay, so we had kind of a pushback uh, even back then from the legendary Dave Chappelle. But now here we are in 2022, and we must address this issue, but this time uh, not up on the silver screen, but part of everyday fashion for black men. Listen, and I for one want to know what are black men telling us when they dress like this? Don't you want to know? I for one do. I mean, here, Wesley Snipes here. What is he telling us when he walks in on the red carpet on the biggest night in Hollywood wearing an outfit like this? I mean, come on. What, what do you say? I mean, it, it is quite uh, amazing to see. I, I think uh, that one thing... It just takes a lot to do something like this. But do you think that perhaps, and this is maybe me playing into this argument just a little bit, but do you think that perhaps Wesley is going through a midlife crisis? <laughs> or is this in his effort, watch this, to stay relevant? Uh, and, and he's just trying to get as close to that line of that community without actually being a part of it no that's not a dress it's not a dress but i would say that this looks more feminine now i could see if a male was wearing just a, a short jacket and even maybe some shorts but this looks quite uh feminine so i i would say and what do you say do i mean for wesley i mean i don't i don't get it I mean, it, this, if someone was wearing this, I would be questioning, you know, where exactly were they going, right? If you just saw them out. But has the fashion industry changed for Hollywood types? Uh, as Dave Chappelle referenced, is this the only way to get ahead? Uh, is it the only way uh, to, to somehow conform to a more feminine way of dress? for black men is that something that we have to look forward to or is this something that some black men are simply embracing as part of who they are guys what do you think uh, let me hear you in the comments i see some comments here oh uh steve steve ridley says keenan played whoopi goldberg too wow Ah, and then remember Flip Wilson as Geraldine. So this is something that in Hollywood has gone on for quite some time. I do remember Flip Wilson, Wilson as Geraldine. Uh, A.B. had actually brought that out to me. And, and again, when this happened before, you know, it was a lot of time in between. But now uh, we see that it's happening more often, this cycle that would normally take years uh, to come back around, it's now coming back quicker. Ah, that's the wonderful Flip Wilson, the legendary Flip Wilson as Geraldine. <laughs> that was quite a, quite a show, but it was television and it was made uh, for comedic reasons. And we laughed and we enjoyed watching him uh, tell people off as Geraldine. But not only has Wesley Snipes changed his entire look, by the way, but there have been others. And believe me, the list will definitely shock you. I mean, everyone from 
Kid Cudi. You remember again on Saturday Night Live paying homage to uh, I can't remember who the singer was that he was paying homage to by wearing this dress. But did he have to do that? And then we have uh, not only Kid Cudi, but NBA baller Russell Westbrook. Now, <laughs> I want you to get this. When this happened last year, TMZ even responded with an article on this platform. Show that article. It says, Russell Westbrook and Kid Cudi rocking skirts for New York Fashion Week. New trend emerging. Okay, this was just last year when they were wearing this during Fashion Week. Listen, my fly guys out there, help me out here. Is this a new trend? If it is, then I'm glad. I am so glad that I'm not one who follows trends. And there are also other black men uh, who are stars that are on the uh, on the on the rise here, who have also taken part in this trend. And this is Lakeith Stanfield. Now, in this, it was a, a top that looks more like a dress. But then he had to go and wear the heels and stockings. And I'm telling you, I like Lakeith as an actor. I think he's an amazing actor and able to do a lot of roles. But when they do this, it definitely confuses me. And listen, what are black men trying to tell us when they dress like this? What is this? Did he just get neutered? I mean, because, you know, that's what they do when they do your, your animals, right? Your pets, your dogs. They put the cone around their head so they won't... Uh, try to lick themselves and infect. Has he been neutered? Is this a way of feminizing Bruh. black men? <laughs> you guys help me out. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just what it looks like to me. So, so listen, there was another guy that was so upset that Russell Westbrook was accredited with wearing a dress first. And his name was Kenny Stills, who's an NFL wide receiver. But he was so upset that that Russell Wilson was accredited for wearing the dress first that, that he responded with a post that said, tell Russ, I started this dress-ish. Yeah, this is a family show. We don't use that type of language, but you can read it there almost. This is what he said because he wanted to be accredited for starting the trend of wearing dresses because he wore one, guess what, in 2012. My beautiful butterflies, I can I can you help me out here, please? What are black men telling you when they dress like this? Let me see it in the chat. What what are they telling you? Ah, uh, Von Delling, thank you. Kurt Cobain is who Kid Cudi was playing, uh, paying homage to when he wore that dress on Saturday Night Live. And I, I can appreciate the late, great Kurt Cobain. However, there's a limit to what I would do to pay homage, and that would be crossing the line for me. But nevertheless, what are black men, when you see black men dressed like this, my beautiful butterflies, what is it that they are saying to you? Let me ask this question. Uh, is it more liberating for a man uh, to want to dress more feminine? Uh, do men feel more liberated? And again, I'm not talking about the LGBTQ community. I'm talking about those men who identify themselves as heterosexual. Because listen, I don't believe Wesley Snipes uh, uh, is trying to go into another community. I think he's a straight black man. But is it more liberating? Because you can wear a dress. Is that more liberating? Uh, in a conversation that I was having this week on this subject matter uh, with a colleague, uh, he mentioned that some clothing is culturally appropriate and may seem odd when a man or a person wears them. And I can agree that could be possible. For example, uh, if a Scottish man wore a kilt, okay? If a Scottish man wore a kilt, then that's part of their culture. Nothing to see there. But but listen, this guy is not 
Scottish. No, ma'am, no, sir. He is not Scottish. So when I see Russell Westbrook in a kilt, I have to wonder what are black men telling us when they dress okay. like this? <laughs> so listen, this sets the stage uh, for where I want to pivot and what to what I really want to offer tonight in this discussion. And, and that is this term gendered fashion, gendered fashion. So there was an article published online in the titlepress.com uh, website. Uh, and this was at the latter part of 2021. And the article is the title, you see it here, Kid Cudi proves gendered fashion doesn't exist in 2021, right? So in this article, the, the writer stated that Gendered fashion, uh, as defined, it, it means clothing specific to a particular gender, was proven as non-existent simply by the mere fact that rapper Kid Cudi wore this number here at the CFDA Fashion Awards, right? And so here is the excerpt from the article about Kid Cudi, and I want you to please Pay close attention to the pronouns used in this article. It says, her latest outfit, however, is what caught her eye the most. Cuddy attended the CFDA Fashion Awards last week and what can only be described as a cross between bridal and groom attire, an ankle length wedding gown paired with a white blazer, lace gloves, tights, and a veil. Louis Vuitton sneakers and dark eye makeup were contrasted with Cuddy's hair, which was dyed a bright red for the occasion. And then it goes on to say, it says, she has also become one of the most consistent, innovative celebrities on the planet when it comes to fashion. She has, and then says Cuddy has always been at the forefront especially when it comes to blurring the lines between men's and women's fashion, and especially in 2021. Did you catch the use of pronouns there? Now, is, is this what this is all about? Black men who simply want to blur the lines between men's and women's fashion? Ladies, are you okay with that? Listen, are you okay with that? I, I want to see it in the chat. Are you okay with that? What would you do if your husband came home and said, I'm going to look through your closet because I want to wear that dress that you wore last week. I want to wear it this Bruh. week. What would you feel about that? Are, are you okay? with black men who consider themselves heterosexual showing up wearing the same outfit that you are wearing for a date. What if they showed up and you were going to wear this number, you young, beautiful butterflies, you want to go out uh, with the actor, rapper, Jaden Smith. Is that acceptable to you? Oh, maybe you like him a little more on the hip hop side, a little young, a little thuggish, so you know, a little rough and tough and all that stuff. Yeah, and you know, young thug showed up to take you out. Uh huh. What you gonna do about that? Better yet, you like to live on the wild side. You like him a little bit curious, and so. Little Nas X shows up and he's wearing this number. You loving it? <laughs> and listen, even for the mature woman, here's one for you. Billy Porter shows up and he's wearing his gown to the black and white affair. You digging it? You dig? All right. Listen, listen. I'm having a bit of fun here, but I agree 
that a black man wearing a gown really is no threat to black masculinity. However, as times change and the blurring of the lines in fashion continues, will we truly be able to still say the same? So when, when it comes to gendered fashion, some people believe clothes are just clothes and are only a proxy of expression. They don't have any gender of their own separate from the wearer. In practice, this would mean simply letting go of the women's wear and men's wear labels and describing styles. Now listen, when I thought about this, I said, this would cater to more people, especially if sizing was expanded. For instance, uh, a larger woman could find clothing that would normally be sold in the men's section in a kind of clothing for all area or, or unisex section section. And I, I think that this is dangerous and a dangerous precedence to set. You know why? Because black men are already ridiculed for simply being, being black. Guess how I know. <laughs> And this blurring of the lines in terms of fashion would not do anything to improve what others think about us already. And in my opinion, it will do more harm than help. Ladies, let me ask you still, are, are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Oh, this is a very good question uh, that was posed here. Stephen Ridley said, would he wear this if he weren't famous? That's the question we have to ask. If these men weren't famous, would they wear that? If Wesley Snipes wasn't famous, if Kid Cudi was just your average everyday Joe, would he dress like that? And here's, here's my, my worry. It is when these people are celebrities and celebrities often have fans and fans always and oftentimes imitate what their favorite celebrities wear and do. That's why most of them are brand ambassadors. That's why most of them get the GQ, GQ spreads uh, and photo shoots. Why? Because they are celebrities and they have fans that they can influence by their style. So if we see our greats, our celebrities, our, our uh, NBA stars dressing this way, do you think they may influence your son to dress the same? If your son decided one day he wanted to shed the labels and wear something from your closet, ladies, would you oblige him? No, no, listen. Because I, I, I feel some tension in the chat. I'm not saying that your child approaches you with the I'm coming out discussion and then says, you know, he wants to bombard your closet. But, but he maintains that he is heterosexual and simply wants to wear some of your clothing because, well, he likes the way you look in them. Now, let me say this. I, for one really love women's fashion. That's why this platform is He Spoke Fashion, where we discuss women's fashion from a man's perspective. You know, I, I really love uh, the fact that women's clothing and women's fashion, uh, they're able to use uh, the entire spectrum of colors when they're producing the wonderful fashion that women wear. And, and the wonderful ways in which this fashion is tailored I mean, I love it. I love to see women uh, being all things woman. But the main thing that I love about women's fashion, and hear me close, is the fact that they are made for women. You say it's simple for me. It's simple for me because I really don't think our bodies look the same in clothes. And guess what? <laughs> I, for one, am so glad about that. I don't know about you. But some of these clothing, I know that it's going to take a women's physique to wear them. What do you think, guys, in the chat? 
Some of you say it, they were confused. <laughs> Listen, Steve, you, you're cracking me up. He said that if, and, and this is back to, uh, if they came and asked you to wear, your spouse came to, your husband came and asked you to wear something from your closet. He says, if he, if he wore it better, then that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> it would be because if he if a man looks better in women's clothing than a woman looks because the clothing believe me hear me close guys clothes are tailored for a particular gender they are they are the women's clothing listen you don't need a zipper in the front <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you, you don't really need it in the front. We need it in the front because we don't always have a seat when we use the restroom. You'll get that later when you when you think about it. <laughs> but listen, 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 it, it's time, I believe, to bring this discussion to a close. And listen, you guys, you guys like my shirt. You guys like, you guys like my shirt. Let me move this a little bit. You guys like my shirt listen i don't know if you guys are uh, cigar lovers or someone who just wants to try a cigar and listen there is a group a fat ass fat ass group even on facebook and website a fat ass.com p-h-a-t-a-s-h uh, and they have a lot of merchandise just like this. I love this uh, T-shirt. I love a lot of the clothing there. But listen, even if you don't know anything about smoking a cigar, this is a group that you want to be a part of because they're always offering tips and favorite cigars to try and things of that nature. And they are some real experts. Uh, the, the, the owner of the group there, uh, Cedric Dunstan, is a personal college buddy of mine. A uh, great guy. He's the administrator there, uh, and he is glad to have you and welcome him, uh, uh, welcome you uh, to the group. I'm telling you, you want to be a part of the Fat Ash community. So I suggest you go out, and I'm going to put the the link there in the chat. Uh, you guys on YouTube, so you can go out and join the group, or or just hit them up on the website. There's a lot of information there, and guess what? Even if you're in another area and you say, you know, I, I would love to be a part of a, a cigar uh, community because I want to know where the local cigar bars are in that community. There's always a cigar bar that they can refer you to or recommend. And guess what? Sometimes that community and people that are part of it, they will meet you out on that community. That's right. Or, or at that location, excuse me. So you want to be a part of the fat ash community go ahead and hit them out the link will be down below but listen it's time to bring this discussion to a close i've really enjoyed you all on tonight and i hope that you enjoy this discussion remember this is he spoke fashion and i am the host daylon thomas and i want to leave you with this so for black men in this day uh, where we can be anything that we want to be and we can accomplish all that our work ethic and our God will allow us to accomplish. I think it is safe to say that this discussion is one that we needed to have in order to really establish and set some boundaries when it comes to our fashion choices. My objective tonight was simple. and That was to use Wesley Snipes as an example of a successful black man who now at the peak, or some would say maybe not the peak of his career, has had to make some changes to somehow remain relevant and to remain employed. Mm. I want to challenge every black man to live a life that won't make you have to conform to someone else's idea of fashion. And at the end of the day, that you are comfortable with the choices you make in fashion and in life. But before we go, I want to remind you of the He Spoke Fashion One Spring Day Party coming to the beautiful city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's right. You don't want to miss this event 
as we celebrate our view viewers there in the city as well as honoring the community heroes in the area and guess what we're going to have a great time if you like comedy live music and a host of other surprises then you don't want to miss this event the tickets are between twenty dollars and vip twenty five dollars and they can be purchased at eventbrite so go now and get your ticket because this event will sell out soon and we don't want you to miss out all right well that's all i have for you tonight i want you to have a good night good fashion and remember peaceful fashion to you hit the like button and the subscribe button and remember fashion changes and so can you have a good night and we'll see you soon